Okay, this lesson allows me to introduce sculpt mode and just give you guys a basic feel for how sculpt mode differs from edit mode. Okay, when you're in edit mode, you have, you're kind of limited to, to moving vertex points, edges and faces in a very cumbersome way. I mean, it gives you a lot of control, but uh, you can't really manipulate a lot of vertices at one time. Okay, but if I switch to sculpt mode here, uh, I'm actually gonna use the tab at the top because that changes my whole layout a little bit faster. I'll just switch to sculpt mode. By the way, before I switch to, before I switch to sculpt mode, I do make sure that I have the sphere selected. There should be an orange outline around the sphere. That way when I'm in sculpt mode, I'll be able to sculpt the sphere and the cone will, the cone will be immune to anything I'm doing. Um, if I start to try to manipulate vertex points right now, it doesn't actually create more geometry for me unless I check dime topo. So if I hit G, you know, I would just move, I could push and pull vertex points around, but I need to be able to add more geometry. So I'm going to check dynamic topology and 12 is, is the default setting. If you want a little more detail, like I want right now, I might cut that in half down to six. Okay. That'll give me some more detail. And I want to only stick, since this is an introductory lesson, I want to only stick to using this inflate brush. Okay. One thing I like doing is hitting shift spacebar to quickly choose different brushes because this list gives me the name of the brush. Okay, I'm going to use inflate and you can tell that as soon as I click, it's adding subdivisions and it's kind of creating a blob down here. Okay. And of course, I'm trying to make it look like this ice cream is dripping down. Okay, it might look kind of funny at first, but if you want to give if you want to give these blobs uh, more diameter, if you want to increase the the blob that you're making, hit the letter F, and after you tap F, you can move your cursor. You can increase the brush size and look at how much bigger that is. Okay. Same thing if you want to if you want to make it smaller, you could tap F and just make it smaller as well. For example, if I want to create more of a drip, like a small drip coming down. Okay, if I hold down shift, that'll smooth out my model. If I hold down control, instead of inflating it, it'll go the opposite direction and I could make a like a bite into this ice cream here. Okay, and finally, if I feel like this brush isn't really strong enough like it I want it to kind of have more of an impact when I click or tap I can always use shift F okay shift F will adjust my strength it's already at 100% so that's why it's pretty sensitive but if it's down to like you know I'm using the slider now if it's if it's lower and you want it to be higher an option an alternative to using the slider is just to hit shift F and you can just move your cursor to 100%. Okay, so F for brush size, shift F for strength, control will allow you to push inward, shift will allow you to smooth. And because I have dy to dynamic topology checked, any, any kind of brush stroke that I make on this model is adding more geometry with a high level of detail since I lowered that number to six. Okay guys. Go ahead and try making your own melting ice cream cone.